Okay, this is a, um, a video demonstrating um, a simple Python simulator that illustrated um, as it uses the stack and computes um, the factorial of codes uh, of four. All right, so let's take a look at the code. Very, very simple. Um, here is the main program, um, putting four in uh, EAX, passing, um, actually making room for the return value by the function by pushing EAX, then pushing EAX again to pass um, the value of n, which is 4, calling the function factorial, and then coming back we can pop whatever the function computed. computed. So the, the function gets its parameters through the stack uh, and returns the value through the stack. And then after that we exit the program. And here is the factorial function. Um, it saves EBP first and then moves uh, ESP to EBP, so EBP will point to the stack frame for the function. Um, the parameter that is passed is at EBP plus 8 in the stack, so we compare it to 1, that's the stopping condition. If it's greater than 1, we recurse, otherwise we know the answer is 1, factorial of 1 is 1, and we put this at EBP plus 12, which is the location in the stack where the return value is located, Then we pop EBP and return 4. And we see that we don't need to save registers here other than EBP um, because we don't use any other register. However, if we recurse, and here is the code, let's see if I can make it uh, display on the screen. If we recurse, we're going to use EAX, EBX, and EDX, so we're pushing uh, all three of them. Then we're getting the, the value of n that is being passed, the parameter decrementing it so that we can compute n minus 1 times the factorial sorry n times the factorial of n minus 1 and then we we making room for the return value passing n minus 1 calling the factorial popping the result from the factorial in ebx multi putting into eax the parameter multiplying uh, by ebx and uh, so that gives us n times factorial of n minus 1 and that is in edx eax we are going to assume that EDX is 0, and we're putting this uh, at EBP plus 12, which is the place where the returned value is for the function, and then we pop in reverse order the registers that we pushed at the top. We pop EBP, which we had pushed uh, right here, and then we turn 4 because there's uh, um, the 4 bytes um, used uh, for the parameter that we don't need. So that's the um, that's a recursive factorial function. So we're going to take a look at how that works, actually, using that very simple Python simulator. Okay, so I'm using Python 3.5, and the code is called um, assembly simulator.py, and it's going to show me here um, the code, and that particular um, arrow indicates where the instruction pointer is uh, actually pointing, so the move is the next instruction the processor is going to execute. In here I'm going to see the stack, so right now the stack points to zero, that's a D word, it's at the top of the stack, the stack is going to go down, and here I'm going to see my registers, uh, EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX. Alright, so um, by simply pressing enter I'm going to make the instruction point pointer go down. So I'm, I moved 4 in EAX, and you see EAX contains 4 here. Um, push EAX to make room. So this XX here indicates that the value is not important. I'm just making room in the stack for the returned value from the function. And then the next push, I'm going to pass the value of n to the function. Okay, now I have another uh, copy of 4, but now this is n, this is the parameter, that will be the return value. Call the function fact. So now I am inside fact, that little arrow indicates that I am starting the function and I'm about to push EBP and move ESP into EBP. And so what I see is that 18 is the return address. Actually, with my simulator, 18 is the line number of the, the line when the instruction is. So it's not quite exactly the return address, but it's a return line, but it will work nonetheless. Little star here indicates that it's a return address. And 0 is the old EBP. EBP used to contain 0, so that's the value. So the simulator holds on to actually integer values, but at the same time I can put some comments in the stack by using this um, this construction right here. Okay, I'm about to compare n that is passed to the, fu the factorial function to 1 to see if I need to stop the recursion or not. 
compare EBP plus 8 to 1, EBP plus 4 plus 8, that's the number 4. It's jumping greater to recurse. I'm going to go to recurse. And here, because I'm going to be using three registers, I'm pushing them. And I see the old EAX, the old EBX, the old EDX pushed in the stack. I'm going to get the parameter, decrement it. Make room for the function to return the factorial of that number that is in EAX, pass EAX, call the function. So now we're back starting the function again, which is going to push EBP, move EBP, ESP. So now both EBP and ESP pointing to um, the bottom of the stack right now. Compare EBP plus 8. Now EBP plus 8 plus 4 plus 8 is 3. It's still not 1, so we're going to recurse. I'm saving the registers, um, getting the value of n that is passed to the function, decrementing it, passing it, calling the function fact, saving EBP. Is EBP plus um, 8 plus 4 plus 8 2? That's not equal to 1, so we're going to recurse. I'm right here, save the registers again, then now move into EAX. IBP uh, plus 8, which is um, 2 decremented, and now I'm going to pass that to the function fact. So finally, fact is started, and its parameter EBP plus 8 is, is 1. So I'm passing 1. So the comparison is going to be equal here. It's not greater, so therefore I don't jump to recurse. I move into the return, the place where the return value is, I move, I move 1. So all my x's here indicate um, places where the function will um, pass its return value. And you see that I'm four level down inside the recursion. So there's an xxx of the function that needs to return the factorial of 4, then xxx that will be the factorial of 3, factorial of 2, and so on. All right, so I'm going to move 1. Here it's already one, so that's not going to change, but it removes the xx now because that value is not unknown, and I can pop EBP. See, I, the, the the top of the stack is pointing to the old EBP. I'm going to pop it into the EBP register. When I do that, EBP now points to the frame, the stack frame that is above where I was. Now I can return from that function, and the four is going to get rid of that parameter that was sitting right here. Okay, so now ESP points to 1, which is the, the 1. This 1 here is what the function returns as factorial of 1. I'm going to put it in EBX. I'm going to put in EAX the value of n and multiply the 2 together. Okay, so 2 times 1, EAX is 2, EBX is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and that's what the function is going to return. It had gotten 2, it has to return the factorial of 2. It, it is already 2, but uh, the function doesn't know that, so it puts the information. And now we're going to pop EBP, return 4. And so 2 is at the top of the stack. That's what that function returned when we called it. So it's, we said we, we had passed um, 2, and um, it's returning uh, the value 2. So I can pop that. I'm going to move into EAX 3, which was n minus 1 for this function. Multiply, 3 times 2 is 6. I have 6, which is a factorial of 3. That's what the function needs to return. So we put that in the stack. We pop the, pop the three registers, pop EBP, return, and get rid of 4 bytes. So now the top of the stack is 6, which is the factorial of 3. I'm going to pop this in EBX, so EBX is 6. I'm going to move in EAX the n correspondent, which is 4. 4 times 6 is going to be the factorial of n. Multiply, and so now EAX is 24, and that's what the function is going to return. I'm going to put 24 at the right place in the stack, which should be right here. Okay, I have my 24 right there. Now we can pop the three registers. What is at the top of the stack now is the old EBP. I can pop it. 
So BP should be back to zero, which is, was its initial value. Now I can return to the main program. So that's the 18. So it's a line in the main program. And that's the return address. And 4 is going to get rid of this N4 that I had passed. That was my parameter. OK, so now I'm back in main, where I know that what sits at the top of the stack is what the function returns. So that should be factorial of 4, because that's what I had passed put 4 in the AX and I had pushed the AX here. So call fact, factorial of 4 is this, so I'm going to pop it into the AX, and now I see that the AX has a value 24. That's the factorial of 4. And now I'm ready to exit my program. So this main program here computed the factorial of 4, which is 24, put, and I have it in the AX. And I did it recursively. And as I did it, we saw the stack growing with four different stack frames corresponding to factorial of 4, which required the factorial of 3, which required the factorial of 2, which required the factorial of 1.